second scripture reading this morning is from 2 Corinthians 3 to 12 and 4 2. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are bold. We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. But their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed, because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Therefore, since God's mercy, we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth, plainly we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. This is the word of the Lord. As we took our places around the large conference table, I inwardly winced. Ugh, another meeting. But then the facilitator handed each one of us a kaleidoscope. Mental note, this would be no ordinary meeting. From my earliest sermon writing days, I had used the imagery of a kaleidoscope to expand on the notion of ever-changing, ever-reforming, ever-colorful configurations that symbolized the ever-changing, ever-expanding life of the church. Sometimes the kaleidoscope is simple in its format, utilizing only a few shapes and a few colors. At other times, the kaleidoscope can be extremely intricate, where the colors blend by just the slightest hues and shapes, and they reconfigure into a thousand designs. But the guiding principle of a kaleidoscope, whether it's simple or it's intricate, is this, that the viewer must rotate the kaleidoscope in order that any change occur. All the elements are contained in the cylinder, but no shapes evolve and no designs are created unless the elements are rotated by an outside force. And that's the viewer who might be you or me. The kaleidoscope, as far as I'm concerned, becomes an interesting and an appropriate metaphor when we do consider the life of the church. Now, here we are. We are elements of all sizes and shapes, all ages, of all kinds of abilities and talents and treasures. Our ages span from some who have been here as old as 100 years and as young as a brand new baby. We come here from countries all over the globe and we come here also as second and third generations from the Treasure Coast. The beauty is that we can reconfigure into a myriad of designs and still be the people of God, gathered as the church. Our possibilities are almost endless, and each bears merit. If we allow the viewer, who in this case is the Holy Spirit, to rotate 
the kaleidoscope. This coming fall, First Presbyterian Church of Stewart will celebrate its 90th anniversary. We certainly know our history. We remember the past. But it's time to shift the focus, to turn that kaleidoscope to the future, our future as a church in the 21st century. I know we worry about size because somehow we equate size with strength of faith. And I say, think again. Remember how Jesus said where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am also? This congregation has been a strong and faithful witness to our Lord. From us as the Mother Church, we have planted four other churches in the area and our work is far from over. We must continue to share the word, to walk in the light, because now more than ever, Christianity is a target. But it's not only from the outside, but it's from the inside as well. A recent Gallup poll disclosed that 42% of the U U.S. population's confidence in the church and organized religion has fallen dramatically. And that's over the last four decades. Six out of 10 unchurched agree. Oh, you're not gonna like this, but listen. Six out of 10 unchurched agreed that most churches, and they included synagogues as well, have lost the real spiritual part of religion. And at least half of those have agreed that most churches and synagogues today are not effective in helping people to find meaning in life. Those are sobering statistics and sobering thoughts, and that's why our work is far from over. I remember back in the late 1960s and the 1970s when I really began to uh, participate in uh, conferences and discussions about the state of the church um, it was, we were very discouraged because the demographics of our cities began changing. The socioeconomic makeup was shifting. Poorer ethnic groups were coming into the city while the white middle class were heading out to the suburbs. Because remember, you know, I'm not saying anything you don't know, but mainline churches, for the most part, are white and middle class. Okay, and so when that shift begins to take place, we suddenly, we didn't have anything to say to our neighbors. They were near us, but we didn't know how to talk to them. We didn't know how to share the gospel. And it was a double dilemma because while there were new people coming in, all friends, many friends, many family members had moved out to the suburbs and relocated in churches that were close to them. And we missed them. We wanted our glory days to return. And little did we realize that like the kaleidoscope, God's kingdom shifts, it grows, it changes colors, it reconfigures into different but equally as beautiful and startling shapes. 
but we couldn't see this clearly. And I am presuming that we still don't. Think of those statistics, some of them coming just from June of this year. We failed to realize that our eyes and our minds were veiled. That the gods with a small g of this world were and are what are keeping us from seeing the full glory of God in Jesus Christ. As the Church Universal, my friends, we are being brought to our knees and we are being humbled. It's only, only when we become more willing to step out in faith that the veil becomes sheerer and then disappears. If we can only embrace the magnificence, embrace the colorful beauty and the shape of our God in Christ as he is seen through us, his people. The question I have is, can we become the church each time the Holy Spirit turns that cylinder each time. Not just once, the one we understand, but when it changes again and again and again. Can our eyes and our hearts and our minds be dazzled once again by these vast possibilities. We must resist the urge to turn away, to let that veil drop down over our faces and continue to be less significant, less significant in the lives of others. The good news is that first church is on a journey. And we, its members, are like the pilgrims facing a new world. And as unlikely as it seems, our compass seems to be a kaleidoscope. Our guiding force, the Holy Spirit. And our goal, to quote Paul, that all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit, so, I'm going to ask you to do something with me. I want you to repeat what I say. You ready? You awake? If you're asleep, nudge your neighbor. Wake him up. Okay? I don't want to hear any me, 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 me. I want to hear words. Let's be bold. Let's, be bold. Let's pull the veil away. Look directly into the kaleidoscope and embrace what we believe. Amen. Thank you. you have said